Hi everyone, and welcome to another installment of CUDA Crash Course. My name is Nick, and today we're going to be continuing on our optimization of a uh, kernel for uh, the sum reduction operation. So uh, in previous videos, we had gone over first a baseline for sum reduction that you know, it wasn't entirely unoptimized, it did use shared memory, but we found it had a lot of problems. And so we'll do a recap of the problems of our original implementation uh, our uh, two su uh, successive optimizations that we did, and then we'll go over the optimization that we're going to look at today. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's our first, um, the basic, uh, the high level view of kind of what we implemented. So as we know, sum reduction is where we take an entire vector and we condense it down to a single element that represents the sum of all of the other elements in that vector. And this is a very uh, embarrassingly parallel application because uh, none of these additions depend on each other. Only the different um, uh, steps depend on the previous partial sums. But uh, within one step, everything is independent. So uh, here what we did was something very uh, simple and very obvious, which is we just started indexing things based upon uh, the exact thread number that matched up with the index. So thread 0. Um, did index 0, thread 8, did index 8, and so on and so forth. But this left uh, these big gaps within the uh, warps themselves. So if you look at something like this, so we're skipping you know, half of the threads within every single warp, so only half the threads are active at any given moment uh, within each warp. So some bad uh, utilization there. And so we fix that with our later implementation by instead using successive threads to do this operation. So instead of doing 0, 2, 4, uh, 6, 8, it instead is sequential. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, uh, so we solved that problem of that, uh, that warp divergence where only half of the threads in a warp are active at any given moment. Uh, but we saw that this kind of leads to a little bit of uh, trouble as well in the fact that it led to something called shared memory bank conflicts. So, um, so we did this optimization uh, in order to fix shared memory bank conflicts by uh, compacting all of our threads and doing uh, sequential accesses instead of these strided accesses. So instead of having you know this base and offset, we instead we're going to uh, have you know this bulk load of these say eight sequential addresses and then uh, we're going to add those to eight other sequential addresses. And the reason why we did that, like I said, was because of shared memory bank conflicts. We have the uh, possibility in the other example, uh, with the way memory is laid out, of having multiple threads queuing up at the same bank uh, in shared memory. And so what this what this really means is that uh, you know all of the all the data that we're trying to access is going to be strided. The addresses are going to be strided across 32 different banks. So. If the data, if we're accessing on a stride, that we're, we're going to end up getting multiple threads that are accessing the same bank. And if that happens, uh, so let's take the good case. So the good case is that every thread is accessing a different bank. And if that happens, uh, everyone loads their data at the same time and everyone finishes in about five cycles or so. Now, uh, another option that is still good is if everybody accesses one bank or accesses one bank but they all access the same value, and then there can be a broadcast of that value. Now the problem arises if multiple threads access one bank, but they don't access the same value, and so we can't broadcast anything. So they end up getting queued up sequentially. So instead of, say, it taking five cycles to load up the data from shared memory, uh, these threads will have to wait for, say, bank four. So this will end up taking, in total, for everyone to finish, 15 cycles. So three times as long is uh, if we didn't have these bank conflicts. So bank conflicts can be kind of nasty. Now, one of the other things that uh, uh, that is not immediately apparent and as something like bank conflicts or warp divergence is the fact that um, a lot of our threads after the first iteration of uh, some reduction are actually uh, idle. So uh, half of our threads become idle after that first um, iteration. And so we have to think to ourselves, is it really worth 
launching all of these thread blocks if half of the total threads in the system become idle on the first iteration. And so what it turns out is, uh, no, it's not really worth it. Um, it ends up being just kind of a waste of space. So what we can do is instead pack that little bit of work for those threads that only uh, are around for the first iteration of some reduction into the ex into uh, other threads. So instead of having you know these real lightweight threads that aren't doing anything after the first iteration, you pack that little bit of work into somebody else's threads. And then you can pack more work overall onto the GPU because you're only launching half of the number of threads that you originally were. So this is taken from the uh, an NVIDIA slide deck on the sum reduction kernel uh, or uh, optimizing a sum reduction kernel. So here's kind of originally what we're doing. So we're, we're launching as many threads as we have elements in our vector. And then we're going to go ahead and load in to shared memory just whatever element corresponds to that thread. So no funny business, uh, just kind of business as usual of what we're used to. Now down here, instead of uh, loading in every single uh, element into shared memory, we have to remember we're only uh, launching half as many threads. So we have to kind of double up on our work on this first load, which means that we have to go ahead and uh, uh, yeah, we have to go ahead and uh, compute the first iteration of some reduction in this initial load to shared memory. Now, because we're launching half as many threads, we need to do a little bit of scaling on our indexing. And the reason why that is, is because remember, initially we had one thread per index and we could just directly do this uh, shared data is equal to this global data. Uh, but instead down here, we need to add the scaling factor of times two, because like I said, we're launching half as many threads. So to reach all the way to the end of that vector, we're going to need to multiply that, uh, scale these things up by two. And so down here, we're going to end up using the scaled value to end up calculating all of these, uh, uh, to, to calculating that first uh, sum reduction operation and putting it in its correct index uh, corresponding to just our normal uh, thread ID for this specific thread block. But we need to do that. Uh, we need to access, you know, things that don't correspond to our global thread ID um, initially. We need to do this first operation here. And if you do some quick back of the envelope kind of calculations on this, uh, you see that it's fairly easy to work out. So say you had uh, uh, 16 total elements in a vector and you had thread blocks that were sized uh, four. So initially uh, in the old version, you would launch four thread blocks, each with four threads. And so you'd have 16 total threads get launched and 16 total threads, just like up here, would load into uh, shared memory. So take it down here, we're launching half as many threads. So in this case, we're only going to be launching two thread blocks, so eight total threads into the system. So down here, uh, if we go ahead and just kind of do this in our heads real quick, so say for thread zero of block zero, this will end up adding together zero, our element zero and element uh, five, or sorry, element four. So it'll do zero here because block ID X is zero, so this entire term kind of goes away. Thread ID X is zero because it's thread zero of block zero. And then, so it'll be GI data zero plus GI data zero plus block dim, which is still four. So it'll be zero plus four. And if you go across that entire block, it'll be zero plus four, one plus five, two plus six, three plus seven. Now you take the second block now. Uh, the second block, this doesn't cancel out anymore. So it'll be block ID X times one. So this will be one times block dim, which is uh, four times two. So this instead will be eight plus thread ID X. So you'll have the first thread block doing zero plus, uh, zero plus four, that one plus five, and then you'll have the second block instead doing, um, uh, it'll be eight plus 12, nine plus 13, uh, 10 plus 14, uh, 11 plus 15. And so that'll go ahead and count, that, that'll be all the 
uh, elements in that original vector, but notice how we had to do this scaling times two in order to get all of those elements since we're only launching half as many threads, like I said. So let's see how this looks in the code. Uh, we're just going to be implementing this back where we already uh, have everything. So if we look down here, um, we of course have to scale our grid size by, uh, by half, because like I said, um, and I've reiterated a couple times already, we're cutting the number of threads in half. And then up here, we'll have that calculation of i scaled by two, uh, because the vector is now two x as long as the number of threads, so we have to scale by this i, uh, this i by two. And then, uh, like I said, we're loading all the elements and doing the first uh, add of the reduction and storing it into shared memory. And we do that just by doing uh, whatever the uh, this TID winds up being plus this, uh, or it'll actually, sorry, it'll actually be this I, right? It's, uh, if we look back to that previous example, it's going to be I plus uh, GI data. Uh, in this case, our global data is just this vector V that we're passing in um, plus the dimensions of the block. And so then uh, our sum reduction kernel, uh, the rest of it stays exactly the same. Uh, this will just end up being naturally uh, one iteration uh, less, uh, just based on the fact that, uh, or sorry, th this will be the exact same number of iterations, we just won't have quite as many thread blocks getting launched. So let's go ahead and build this. We'll build it, and then down here, we can go ahead and uncomment these. Uh, let's build it again, actually. Oops. Uh, we'll build it again just so we can see, make sure that we verify our output. We have an assert here as well, but sometimes we like to see what it prints out. And we'll go ahead and run it. And there we go. So we got the right answer. That's 65.536. OK, so let's actually look at the, comp uh, the performance comparison now. So I actually have these four are the uh, all of our previous uh, runs uh, that we've gone over. So uh, so what do we have here? So that's going to be our latest one. So let's look at our diverged case. So in our diverged case over here, we're launching a grid of 256 thread blocks. And we saw that, you know, we'll mainly consider the uh, the first kernel launch, not the single thread block one, just because that dominates the time. And so it took about 31 uh, uh, microseconds uh, in order to run the, uh, uh, the, the main bulk of the kernel, and then four for that final thread block. So that was our unoptimized version. And then we went to the bank conflicts version. So the bank conflicts version got a lot better. We went from 31 microseconds down to 17.8 microseconds, just about. Uh, and then a little improvement on the single thread block as well. Most of the scaling that will, most of this improvement we'll see will be on the uh, larger amount of work we do. So that first kernel launch. So then we went from 17 and then when we got rid of bank conflicts, we went down to 14 microseconds. So we got better even still. Uh, so these are all the profiler results, uh, but we're still launching 256 uh, thread blocks and um, we're not compacting that work or doing that first cycle uh, elimination. And then finally we have this reduce idle that instead has a block size of, um, or it launches only 128 thread blocks so we can shove more work on the GPU at once. And then we see we go for all the way from around 13, 14 uh, microseconds all the way down to around nine microseconds. So yeah, big improvement here. We're, you know, we're doing a lot of a lot of really great things in terms of optimization. So we've already uh, taken our original uh, uh, our original uh, our code that we wrote that was uh, was already using shared memory, and it takes only a third of the original time it took to write. In fact, less than a third. So it's going to be uh, you know over 
three times faster after we've done these optimizations. And we still have a couple more to go, so stick around for later videos. We'll go into, I think, two more optimizations for the sum reduction kernel to really drive that uh, performance even better. But that's going to do it for today. As always, if we go to uh, github.com slash coffee before arch, this is where we have all of our code um, posted. So if we go to uh, the CUDA programming, we're going to have uh, all of the uh, all the code that we have uh, worked on throughout this video. So here we have some reduction idle threads. Uh, let's go ahead and just comment this out real quick, these print statements, because we already have this assert in here. And we can go ahead and put in final version of uh, reduce idle threads. And then we'll commit and push. And then we'll go ahead and go back here and we'll reload. Here we go, some reduction, reduce idle threads. So if we go up here, feel free to take this code, play around with it. Um, if you have any questions about it, make sure to message me. All the contact information is going to be on this front page of CUDA programming, uh, including what environment I used for this video. So I uh, hope you guys learned something today and as always, have a nice day.